Okay, so that was a clip that I posted to my Instagram page about two months or so ago, and I thought it would be cool to revisit it and break down some of the techniques that are involved in this exercise, as well as explain some of the music theory behind it along the way. So brief preface to this video before we get started. This video is primarily intended for those who have dabbled with techniques such as sweep picking, economy picking, legato, and are maybe just looking to improve on those a little bit, as well as those who know just a little bit of music theory already. It doesn't have to be a ton. As long as you know generally what the notes are on the fretboard and you've learned a scale or two in the past, should be fine. But if you're a complete beginner, I mean, you could still watch it, but just know that it might not make a whole lot of sense to you. Additionally, the guitar that I used in that original clip was tuned to drop C, and I went ahead and just grabbed a guitar in standard tuning to make it more applicable to most of you guys, as well as to make it easier for me to explain the music theory. <laughs> All right, that is more than enough talking, so let's just get into it. So we start off with an alternate picking sextuplet run in the key of E harmonic minor which goes like this. Uh, that was better. Let me break down that pattern. So first of all, we start off in the key of E harmonic minor, which is comprised of the notes E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D sharp, and E. And I'm starting on the seventh degree of the scale, which is the note D sharp on the sixth fret of the A string. And then I'm ascending three notes of the scale linearly like this. Then we're gonna go up a third, which again, just means that we're skipping one note of the scale. So if we start on D sharp, then we have E and then F sharp. We're gonna skip the note G, then go to the note A. And we're gonna do so by shifting positions, which just means we're gonna take our index finger and move it up one fret and on the next string. Okay, so that's six, seven, nine, and then seven with your index finger on the D string. All right, so then we're just gonna ascend another three notes of the scale again. Okay, and honestly, that's pretty much the gist of the run because I just repeat those patterns in higher octaves as we move forward. So like I said, this is a sextuplet run, which just means we're going to fit six notes in the span of one beat. All right, so it's gonna sound like one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? So it really helps to accent the first note in every group of six, just to keep that rhythmic pulse going. All right, so for the next group of six notes, you're just going to repeat the last three that you played on the D again. So it'll sound like this. Okay, and then you're gonna continue by repeating that first pattern that we played, just an octave up on the G string. So that'll be, okay, eight, nine, 11 on the G. Okay, so. And then again, you just repeat the last three notes that you played on the G string one more time to begin the next group of six notes. And then you move on to play that second pattern that we did, again, just an octave up, this time on the B string. So that'll be 10, 12, 13. So all together, it's gonna sound like this. I kinda got ahead there, but... All right, so that last thing that I played there is again, just that first pattern that we did another octave up. So that'll be 11, 12, 14 on the high E. And that's how we end the pattern. So it goes. All right, that's pretty much it for that. Okay, so now here's where the fun really starts. So for the rest of this exercise, I'm going to be arpeggiating seven chords and one sixth chord, which I'm pulling from the keys of E natural minor and E harmonic minor, which I will put on the screen right about here, maybe? Okay, so as you can see, we have E minor seven, F sharp, half diminished seven, G major seven, A minor seven, B minor seven, C major seven, and D dominant seven. Oh yeah, you guys like how my whammy bar magically appeared? I always forget to put that on. All right, so now let's juxtapose that with the seven chords of E harmonic minor. So those are E minor major seven, F sharp half diminished seven, G major seven sharp five, A minor seven, B dominant seven, C major seven, and D sharp fully diminished seven. <laughs> Pretty
pretty different, right? So now let me put the progression that I'm playing up on the screen. So we start by arpeggiating an E minor six chord. And this is the only six chord that we're gonna arpeggiate in the sequence. Okay, so really what that is, is an E form E minor arpeggio that we're descending. And if you're not familiar with the term E form, it's just a reference to the cage system. Honestly, don't worry about it. We can go over that at another point in time. I don't wanna make this video too long. All right, so here's how we play it. We start with the 15th fret of the high E string with our fourth finger, and we start that on the downstroke, and then we play the 12th fret of the high E string, and then we roll onto the 12th fret of the B string, same finger, and then 12th fret of the G string, and then 14th fret of the D string, and then 15th fret of the A string. Okay, and let's stop there for a sec. All right, so obviously there's a roll in here, and be really careful when you practice these, because they can be kind of tricky to execute cleanly. Okay, so whenever you have rolls in a sweep, you have to anticipate them by placing your finger in a way that allows you to create minimal movement while distributing the weight to different points of your index finger so as to play one string at a time while muting the others. Did I say that right? Yeah, so. Not. So what I mean by that is when you go into the sweep, it's good to start with your index finger already covering the high E B and G strings, right? And then you just kind of distribute the weight to different points of your finger as you descend, right? So very minimal movement in this technique. All right, so for the rest of this arpeggio, we ended on the note C, and then we just pull off to the notes B and then A. So, all right, so. That's it. Okay, so now we're going to arpeggiate a G major seven chord, which is played like this. And as you can probably tell, that's not just a straightaway sweep, right? There's some legato mixed in there. So whenever we have multiple notes on any given string, with the exception of the high E string, we're going to use legato. So I should mention that we're not actually picking the first note of this arpeggio. We're going to slide into that note from the last note of the previous arpeggio. Okay, and then we're gonna hammer on to that next note, which is the 14th fret of the A string. And then you have the 12th fret of the D string, 11th fret of the G string. So all together, that's the root, third, fifth, and seventh of the chord. And then you're gonna hammer on to the 12th fret, which is the root of the chord again. Okay, so. And then from there, we actually encounter another kind of tricky roll, which occurs going from the G string, 12th fret, to the B string, 12th fret, and we're gonna use our second finger for that. Okay, so all together we have. Okay, all right, so we do a downstroke on the 12th fret of the B string, and then continue to do a downstroke on the 10th fret of the high E string, and then an upstroke on the 14th fret of the high E string. So all together we have. Okay. All right, all right, so moving on we go. What I did there was after I picked the 14th fret of the high E string, which was the seventh of the G major seven chord, I just slid down and picked the seventh of the F sharp half diminished chord. We're going to descend. All right, so let me tell you the frets. On the high E we have 12, 10, and then B we have, oh, shit, no. <laughs> on the high E we have 12, eight, and then we continue up stroking onto the 10th fret of the B, and then with our third finger, we're gonna play the 11th fret of the G, and then pull off to the 9th fret of the G. Okay, so what we did so far was we played the seventh of the chord here, the fifth here, the third here, the root here, and then to the seventh, and then we're gonna continue going fifth, and then third, root. Okay, so it's a pretty simple sequence. Right? So once we finish that, we're gonna slide down to arpeggiate a C major seven. Looks familiar, right? It's the exact same sequence as that G major seven arpeggio. So you can just use that same exact sequence, right? <laughs> okay, so from there, what we do is we outline a B dominant seven chord. So let's bring that chart back up. As you can see, I pulled this chord from E harmonic minor. So that E minor six, G major seven, F sharp half diminished seven, and C major seven, 
Those are all from the key of E natural minor. Some overlap, but you know. But B dominant seven, that is unique to E harmonic minor. So this is where we start to feel that shift and hear the difference in the sound. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just starting on the seventh, going to the fifth, third, root. Seventh, fifth, third, root. All right. This is a different chord, so I'm gonna have to tell you the frets. All right, so on the E, that's five, two. On the B, four, G, four. I feel like I'm playing bingo. <laughs> All right, fuck, where did I leave off? Five on the high E, two on the high E, four on the B, and that's with the ring finger. We have another roll here. Fourth fret of the G, second fret of the G, fourth fret of the D, sixth fret of the A, second fret of the A. All right, so once we get here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide up with our index finger, and we're gonna play, you guessed it, D sharp, fully diminished seven, okay? <laughs> so, all right, and obviously that chord is derived from E harmonic minor, not E natural minor. It kind of builds the tension. All right, so what that is, <sighs> friends. On the A, six, nine, seven on the D, five on the G, eight on the G, seven on the B, five on the E, eight on the E. And remember, you slid into that first note of this arpeggio. Right? All right, so lastly, we just play uh, a power chord, which is going to be an E5 if you're in standard tuning. Oh wait, let me play the whole thing slowly, of course. So I hope you guys found this helpful. And if there's anything that you didn't understand, or if there's anything that you'd like me to go into greater detail about, please feel free to let me know in the comments. I like making these videos. And if you guys learn anything from them, that's a win for both of us. All right, yeah, thanks for watching.